You know, there's two things I really have to say. No matter else, what else we want to cover on this program, I have to say. Uh, the first thing is that uh, that uh, I will not be a part of a system that continues to deny this very best of God's medicines to us, to the hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians who suffer under diagnosed ailments and categories of illnesses and impairments on which marijuana is proven to be the very best relief on earth. Yeah. By God, it is obscene to me to disallow these people with tumors and anorexias associated with nutrition blocking diseases and these people for which it's the best medicine and, and these nausea patients for which it's the best medicine, those folks who are taking cancer treatment, radiation or, or, or chemotherapy and the people suffering from wide angle glaucoma and the people suffering from just distress and despair and depression and the people who sometimes don't think life's worth living and, and the people who, uh, uh, who need a tonic for life, who need to commune with Mother Earth mm -hmm. and they get ill and they're sick because of it, the emphysema people, the, the people with epilepsy, uh, neural disorders like uh, multiple uh, sclerosis. I mean, it is obscene to me to continue to deny these people this very best medicine that can offer them relief in the next five minutes. Keep offer them relief in the next five minutes. You know, Kentucky's got the lowest life expectancy of any state in the union. By God, how can anybody who knows what I just said is true be a part of any system that does not allow people this access? The, uh, we are forced to deal with the pharmaceutical monopolies, and it's only in the name of their profits are our people being denied uh, a much more restful and much more comfortable and enjoyable life on this planet. And uh, I'm going to bring that insight to Kentucky. It's going to become part of the Kentucky psyche. It's going to become part of Kentucky's healing. And Kentucky's going to be known as a center of healing because people are going to come there to find out what it's like to take a much slower pace through the Garden of Eden. Uh, Gatewood, some of your constituents and some of your opponents, I'm sure, are very curious that when elected, how do you plan to implement the hemp crop into the economy, into the working force, into the industry smoothly? Well, there's three, there's three ways to do it. I don't know if it can be done smoothly or not. You know, these are some very ruthless monopolies we're seeking to go into a legitimate competition with. Okay. Uh, they run whole governments and whole dictators, and they slay thousands of peasants uh, every year around the globe. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that they're willing to do anything to try to destabilize me and what I'm trying to do in that state. I'd be foolish to consider it in any other way. But there's some things that they cannot stop me from doing. There's a, that uh, what we ought to do is construct a plan based along the alcohol and tobacco production and marketing techniques. That way no one could point to any segment of that plan and say that won't work. Because it's already in work in either production of alcohol and tobacco and distribution of, of those and, uh, and alcohol. And I think that uh, I think marijuana belongs in those categories. I, I think marijuana belongs in those categories. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, any problems with it certainly ought to be associated with uh, social services rather than law enforcement you know and, and, and i found people who uh, attribute uh, some of their uh, malfunctioning marijuana and, you know it's just not for everybody uh, but uh, I, I just hadn't met many people who wasn't for uh, but i want the farmer to produce it under license now, first of all i think every household ought to be able to grow their own i mean your relationship with mother earth is the most fundamental thing uh, it's even more biological than your birth parents because they're made of the same carbons and the mm -hmm. same uh, earthly products as, as you are. Mm -hmm. And it all came from Mother Earth, you know. Mm -hmm. That's where we came up from, in my opinion. Uh, smoking marijuana is the closest thing to communing with Mother Earth next to eating a pound of mud, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, but you don't feel as good after you eat that pound of mud next oh, morning. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> Don't eat pounds of mud, folks. Cause you to lose work, and Governor Bush will come out, and or President Bush will come out, and anti-mud hysteria. Um, but uh, what I want to do is, you get to grow your own. I mean, by golly, our ability to plant a seed in God's green earth and do what we want to with the green natural plant that comes up out of it is the most fundamental pursuit of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and one has to be one of the most inalienable rights. And, and guarantees, at least within the per number of uh, the Constitution, or at least within the substantive due process clauses of the Constitution. I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, so you ought to be able to do that. That's where I draw the line. People say, Galbraith, why not crack cocaine and heroin? Well, first of all, uh, they 
those substances, I understand, seem uh, to override the freedom of choice. If you want to set those things down after long use and try to walk away from them, they call you back. That's one of the ways Richard Pryor, uh, ways Richard Pryor talked about crack. It just kept calling him back. You know, he couldn't quit it. You know, said Richard. You know, and he just had to come back to it. But marijuana, I don't know anybody. It's just you can lay down and go away and do whatever you want to. You know, and uh, and uh, it doesn't bother you. So if it's a green natural plant, uh, then by God, you ought to be able to grow it. If you want to rub poison ivy all over your body, by God, you ought to be able to rub poison ivy right. all over your body from nature. Uh, whatever you want to do, I like. We go out and we license the farmers to grow a certain poundage allotment. Okay. Now, you know, uh, I'm advising every stockbroker in the state to advise their clients to buy stock in chain link fence companies. Because, uh, <laughs> because when these farmers get to grow this stuff, that's, you're going to see these little chain link enclaves on every one of Kentucky's 86,000 farms. <laughs> okay. First thing, I'm starting my own company. There you go. But, uh, but the farmer, those farms, see, Kentucky has more farms than any other state you need besides four. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't think that from the size of no. it, but I mean, the, and, and the farm size is only one fifth the national average. And uh, as a matter of fact, seventy percent of Kentucky's farms earn less than fifteen thousand dollars a year in commodities off of the land. So, if we can implement a fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollar income to these farmers overnight for something they don't have to add any new land, any new labor, any new structures, any new machines, uh, uh, you know, they can, you know, uh, hell, they're doing it now. I mean, you know, I'm just going to take helicopters out there and make them pay the taxes on it. That's okay. what I'm going to do. <laughs> and get better seed. Uh, and get better seed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, we, I don't want, if a fellow has a thousand acres over here and is making good living off of uh, food crops and stuff like that, uh, I don't want to displace their land. We can grow this hemp for few on marginal, but we're talking about hemp for, for medicinal recreational purposes right now into this licensing system. Uh, on hemp for fuel, we let it grow and occupy a competitive market niche with fuel. Okay. Uh, but that's going to take place in the western part of the state, which is uh, which is flat and large farms. Up in the Appalachia, there's small farms and dirt farms. And uh, I don't want this fellow with a thousand acres having a, a, a pro rata share of, of the market uh, in any kind of uh, superior relationship over this small farmer up in eastern Kentucky. Spread the wealth is it. If I can give everybody $50,000 a year, we'll do it. If I can give everybody $100,000 a year, we're going to do it. But we're, we're going to give it to everybody. Okay. I've got one. We've only got a couple more minutes left. Only. I just started. I mean, I just, I'm just now in the production end of it. But I'm just now in the production end of it. Okay, well, we can keep we can keep Well, well no, I'm, I'm being paid off the land. Okay, but, but it's a marvelous plan, folks. Okay. I'm a great guy, and it, just just trust me on this but one, okay? But I do, I do have one more <laughs> okay. question I want to ask. Okay. Because there's a lot of people now who are good citizens who have been growing this and have been caught smoking it and now have had people come in and take their homes, take their cars, take their boats, take their children, take oh, their life, man. take their right to vote. Man. As a governor, what do you intend to do for these people who are sitting prisoner to Mother Nature's crimes, shall we say? Uh, well, now listen. I mean, I, I would love to say I'm going to pardon every one of them and erase every one of the records and return to confiscated property, just like the government's had to do over here in communist uh, okay. Germany. Uh, but I can't make a campaign promise like that, so I guess that's just part of some of the mental tinkering I go around with. I mean, it's occurred to me, but I can't make a, a campaign promise like that right there. But I tell you, I need 250,000 votes in this election, and 170,000 people in the state of Kentucky have been arrested for marijuana. And they all have mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, fathers, cousins, and friends who ought to know that when I get in there, it's going to get some relief. You know, it's going to get to the point there were these two hunters going through the woods one day, and one of them shot at a coon up in the tree and didn't know whether they got him or not, thought they did, and one of them climbed up to get the coon. And uh, as uh, the coon came alive, and all of a sudden this big tussle took place in the tree, and the tree was shaking, and the coon and the man were wrestling up around the branches, and he yelled down to his partner, shoot, shoot. And the kind of guy looked up there, he couldn't tell, and the fellow said, shoot, shoot. The fellow called up the tree and said, I, I might hit you. And he said, I don't give a damn. One of us up here needs some relief. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's going to be with me, the federal government. All right. All right. Yeah. I like you all to realize that there are people sitting behind bars who have no right, as far as the government is concerned, to express their opinions and their voices, and they cannot be heard. But as Gatewood has said, these people have brothers, mothers, sisters, brothers, fathers sitting out there who can go out there and cast that vote on their behalf. Please go to your polls and let those voices be heard. And Gatewood, 
It has been a real joy to have you on our program. I'm absolutely honored and delighted to be here, my friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, Casper, I've heard about your all's good work, and uh, I'm just real honored to be here. Thank you. Anytime we can have you on the show, we'd love to. I appreciate it very much. As Mark Twain said, a compliment like that can sustain me for months at a time. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, And remember, the next time you tune into this program, focus on the fact that we are trying to reach out so the voice can be heard. If there's anybody in your community that needs to have their story told, please contact us at the address and phone number that's flashing on your screen. And know that the next time that you see me, that it will be time for him.